When being introduced to Flesh and Blood, everyone quickly develops a solid handle on 90-ish percent of how the game works. Obtaining that final 10% of the deeper rules and mechanics is a journey that I'm here to help you with. So today, I want to dive into the behind-the-scenes rules and nuance of the reaction step. To new players, the reaction step is explained as the part of combat where attack reactions and defense reactions are played. When both players have nothing left to play, you move to the next step of combat. While this is correct, it barely scratches the surface of everything that can happen within the reaction step. And if you're caught unaware of some advanced rules interactions in the middle of a game, it can spell disaster for you. Hopefully, this video can prevent a situation like that for anyone getting into more competitive events, and also be a great refresher for experienced players. So let's jump in. It's important to realize that there is no separate attack reaction step and defense reaction step, just the reaction step, during which the turn player can play or activate attack reactions and instants, and the defending player can play or activate defense reactions and instants. The reaction step ends when both players pass priority on an empty stack. Whenever a reaction or an instant is played or activated in the reaction step, the card or ability becomes an unresolved layer on the stack. This means that resource costs and any additional costs have been paid, but the effects of the card are not yet resolved. In this case, the cost of the Razor Reflex has been paid, but the plus three power in giving go again on hit does not take effect while it's an unresolved layer on the stack. The turn player in this situation has two options. One, pass priority to the defending player with the Razor Reflex as the top layer of the stack, or two, hold priority and add another reaction or instant to the stack. In the first situation, when the turn player passes priority, the defending player can add their own reaction or instant to the stack and we start the same procedure again. Or they can simply pass priority back. It is at this point that both players are considered to have passed priority in succession, which resolves the top layer of the stack. The effects of the card are applied and then we arrive back where we started because when a layer resolves, priority returns to the turn player. With a newly emptied stack, the turn player can once again add a reaction or instant to the stack or pass priority to the defending player. If they also pass priority, the reaction step concludes. Priority does not return to the turn player for a final opportunity to play something. In case it isn't obvious, the main piece of advice to keep in mind during the reaction step is to be careful resolving the effects of the cards and abilities on the stack. Think of the reaction step as both players adding layers to the stack from the bottom up and collectively resolving them from the top down. The order in which layers are added and resolved is entirely up to the players. Now, anyone that's played a game of Flesh and Blood knows that this amount of priority passing doesn't explicitly occur between players. As I've said in a previous video, it's somewhat unreasonable for players to declare the passing of priority at every possible instance, but there are certain situations and matchups where it is the correct and courteous thing to do. So let's go over some common examples. Azuri's hero ability is an attack reaction. So just like all other attack reactions, it gets added to the stack before it resolves. And banishing a card face down is the cost of the ability. So that happens before priority is passed. While it's an unresolved layer on the stack, the defending player can add instants and defense reactions on top of it on the stack. This is how the defending player can play a defense reaction before Azuri can actually swap in a commanding conquer. Its continuous effect is not functional until after Azuri's reaction has been resolved. So as the Azuri player, you should activate the ability, pay the cost of banishing a card face down, and then prompt the defending player for any response. When they pass priority back, you carry out the Azuri swap. Warrior especially has quite a few attack reactions with game altering effects. For the purpose of this example, we'll use Glint the Quicksilver, which gives a weapon attack go again, and when the reprise effect is satisfied, draws a card. In certain matchups, the Dorinthia player needs to be very careful before resolving the card draw effect of Glint. Proper etiquette would be to add Glint to the stack and pass priority to your opponent before drawing the card. To put Glint on the table and immediately draw a card is skipping over your opponent's priority window. There are so many things that the defending player could want to add to the stack before the card is drawn. If they voice that they wanted to respond before Glint is resolved, the Dorinthia player now has the extra knowledge of the card that's on top of their deck, 
which could make rewinding the game problematic. At a competitive level rules enforcement event, I would advise consulting a judge. Spreading Plague is an interesting attack reaction that cares about the number of defending cards in the chain link. To get the max value out of the card, the turn player wants the defending player to play defense reactions before they play Spreading Plague. Unlike cards used to defend in the defense step, defense reactions are added as a layer on the stack and are not considered to be defending cards until they resolve. In this case, Spreading Plague creates two blood rots as there are two defending cards on the chain link. Once the Spreading Plague is resolved and the blood rots have been created, any defense reactions added to the chain link afterwards are not retroactively taken into account for additional blood rots. The defense reaction will be considered defending after it resolves, but at this point, Spreading Plague has already come and gone. If Spreading Plague is played in response to a sink below before it resolves, the sink is also not counted towards the number of defending cards on the chain link as it has yet to resolve and become defending. So as the Azuri player, don't jump the gun and play Spreading Plague too early. Just be patient and let your opponent's defense reactions resolve and become defending. Then you can play Spreading Plague to create the most amount of possible blood rots. Of course, when playing this game of chicken, if the turn player passes priority with an empty stack and the defending player passes back, the turn player does not get a final priority window to play Spreading Plague. On a similar note, Shred is another assassin attack reaction that cares about defending cards. This one can really screw you over if you play it at the wrong time. So remember, a defense reaction is not considered to be defending while it is an unresolved layer on the stack. So if you want to target a sink below with a Shred, the sink has to resolve and then Shred can be played with sink as its target. The reaction step is a beautiful little game within the game of flesh and blood. To get the most enjoyment and competitive edge, it helps to know how it works and how to navigate through it so the game can be played as it was designed. That's going to do it for this one. Please do give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And if you know anyone getting into the game, please send them this video. I'm sure they'll learn something useful. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.